So it's time for the final video blog of the year, 2015. Pretty much what I'm going to do to, uh, today is uh, recap what happened in 2015. I can't complain about 2015. I think there were a lot of very good things more than last year. Um, but so here we go, you know. Um, first thing, starting in 2015, I ended up moving to a new apartment, which you can see right in here. Um, I have a better roommate and things have been going okay. Um, sadly, when I moved here, I didn't expect, um, I wasn't planning on, on, on quitting my job and uh, that kind of affected me a little bit financially uh, this year. Uh, well, as you all know, I was working um, last year, I was working on uh, this company called uh, Fortitech or DSM. Uh, premixes as a process operator and um, pretty much I got disappointed with the company because I was working production but then they stopped putting me in the in the mixing rooms and out of a sudden I was being a janitor on a constant basis and I got very frustrated I got very depressed I didn't went to school for that. I got a degree in chemical engineering and I got a degree in business administration accounting and I wanted to use what I learned in college. I couldn't see myself doing throwing trash all the time. Um, so I got very frustrated, so I ended up quitting. I pretty much went to my supervisor and I gave them my ID and I said, don't expect me tomorrow and goodbye. And um, to be honest, I don't regret the decision. I mean, I know things got a little bit harder for me financially um, because of that, but in my opinion, it was the best decision that I have ever made. Um, I spent year unemployed um, after that, and also I had to recover from being on a third shift uh, schedule. But in February, even that I was employed, I was able to make it in February to Connecticut, and I wrestled again, and I had my first one-on-one -on -one match since 2008. And uh, I ended up winning and becoming a women's champion. I would probably put the I would probably post the video link below in the description. So feel free to check it out if you want to. Um, again, that's the second good thing that this year had. Um, I went and uh, got back into wrestling. I've been training every week, except for the time that I've gotten sick and I haven't been able to make it to training. But for most part, I've been training every week at the wrestling school, uh, in your face wrestling schools. Thank you to my friends for having me back. Um, and thank you for the, for, for keeping me in the school. I appreciate the help. I've been getting my roast for most part out of it. You know, um, I just wish that I could work more matches, um, more shows, but we'll see what 2016 brings. Um, and, um, I was glad when my friend uh, asked me to, to be part of the uh, this past year Memories, Moments and Mayhem show where I made a special appearance in the show with my bullwhips. And um, I also enjoyed the fact that in September I went and wrestled again for Slam All Star Wrestling in Vermont. And I haven't been there since 2008. And it was nice to be back there. And the crowd got very into the match and again you can see the match I'll post the, the the link in the description of the video so you can get a chance to see it so that I'm very proud of that especially because of my age I'm 39 and this is a big thing of this year I turned 40 I'm 40 years old I've been in this planet for four decades I've seen everything um, from the First Nintendo to the Nintendo 64 to the Nintendo Wii to PlayStations to oh my gosh okay um, there's a lot and and um, the biggest change I used to live in Puerto Rico move here you know bunch of stuffs ha happening for me in, in during these four decades in, in planet Earth and um, I'm happy that I got to be. 40. I never imagined I was going to get here three years ago. Also, I was very depressed because I wasn't sure if that life was going to treat me well and be able to make it this far. Um, but yeah, I made it far. Um, 
another the good thing that happened this year. Um, and this is a lesson for for anybody. You know, if you if you have a job, doesn't matter the type of job. Never burn bridges. I know I burned bridges earlier this year when I quit the company uh, DSM. Um, but that was a little bit different, and I will never probably do that again. And not even if it's for a for a simple job. And um, back in 2014, I was working in uh, at Home Depot, and uh, I ended up quitting the job because I found a full time job in manufacturing, and uh, I ended up quit leaving the company in good terms. And that actually, I needed it because. Um, I ended up uh, quitting this job. So this year after I quit the job with DSM, I applied again at Home Depot and uh, I went to interview and they hired me back as a cashier and uh, it gave me a uh, source of income after not having a job for about a month. And that's something good because before, back in the two or three years ago, I was having such a bad time, such a hard time finding, jo uh, finding a job that it was not easy for me since we're not easy and I was close to being homeless. And um, I was just employed for about a month. I got the job at Home Depot and then I also got a job that I, to this day, I still have it. And I enjoy it a lot too. It's kind of similar to manufacturing, I will say, but I'm a lab technician and lens crafters. And I like the job because I get to work in a lab and I get to pretty much make things. I make, I'm in charge of helping make the lenses for the eyewear that people purchase. And it's a great job. It has good rewards, you know, specifically because it's, you, you know, we have the processes for one hour. So when a customer puts an order, we have an hour to make the lenses and then they go and pick it up. And it's nice to see when they pick their, their glasses and they're happy about their, their purchase, you know. Uh, I mean, seeing, being able to see, it's one of the most important things in life. You know, you need to be able to see in order to drive, in order to enjoy life. So being able, being able to work in a company making the lenses that people use for daily use, you know, it's really awesome, you know. And uh, the process is learning about the process and the procedures. Having my background chemical engineering for me, that has been very, a, a lot of fun. And um, I'm glad that I decided to stay with the company. It's my second job, and the schedule is not that bad. I, I've been only working like every other Sunday. Um, although I'm for this coming year, I may uh, I may have my hours increase if possible, because I can use the extra money. Because now I have a car. That's the other good thing about 2015. I was able from not having a car, being able to get a car. I thought it was I thought it was going to be impossible for me to do so, but. Um, I put an application at, at a local car dealership and somehow I got approved. Even though I am bankrupt and I got a cheap ton of student loan debt. But I got a car. And to be able to get a good job, one need to have a car up here in upstate New York, in the capital district. You know, you, you need to have a car. You cannot get a good job without a car. It's the sad part, is the courts about this area here. But being able to get a car, that's been a very good thing for me. Um, and how that happened, too. Because it didn't happen on its own, you know. Uh, for a while, I was working at Home Depot and at Lens Crafter, and I could barely go by. Even got to a point that I was, I had my private student loan, and uh, the amount of money that, that I was supposed to pay increased in 2000. Uh, <clears throat> in 2015 and I couldn't afford paying them and I had to make the tough choice. Do I keep myself alive or do I pay this company? And I make the choice of keeping myself alive and keeping my So I put myself in a very bad position financially, something that I would not, um, I would say it wasn't a very good decision, but I had no other choice because I didn't have the money to be able to pay my living expenses and be able to pay that private student loan. And because they didn't give me another repayment options and I had already exhausted all the forbearance options, I pretty much stopped paying the company. And um, I thought I was going to end up going to court for that. And um, But I was able to avoid that in part because I got in July 
after going through different job interviews with state agencies, I finally got back with a job with this with New York State. And um, that has meant a difference in my life because from being um, struggling financially with my income, finally I have a living wage. And uh, it's been like five years since I had a, a real job, a career, and being able to get this job has been amazing because I went from being poor to I don't want to say middle class because it's still not middle class I still a few thousands dollars are from middle class but I went to to have enough money to be able to take care of my ex own expenses and pay my cell loans and also be able to afford getting the car so this year, I'm really happy about that. I pretty much turned my life around. I still have to be very strict with my budget, but I am happy with everything. I have a car now. I can move. I can. I, I can. I, I can have other choices other than the bus line to get to workplaces and all that kind of stuff. And and that's have been for me the most important thing that I have gotten this year being able to get a better job, you know, I've been for years, I mean, for the past, since 2013, which is when I finished my my degree in uh, business administration and accounting at Hudson Valley Community College, I was looking for a better job. I mean, I've been looking for a better job since I left my previous job with the state in, 2000, uh, in 2009. But since uh, 2009 was a very bad year because we were in the recession mode and it was very tough. And um, and then, of course, it was a transition. I transitioned genders in 2008. So I was getting adjusted. And, um, and for one reason, I feel like it also made finding a job more difficult for me. But finally, in 2000. 13, I got my first chance of getting back into the workforce with Home Depot. And then now going back into a full time, high paying uh, job. It's been a big change for me. It's been a big game changer. I mean, I'm not saying that everything's perfect, because to be honest with you all, I still have a lot of student loan debt. The private student loan payment is very high. And uh, it still worries me because I know next year I may not be able to pay that loan. Um, I also consider I'm also considering the option of seeing if I can consolidate the federal student loans and have only one payment because I realized that I'm on the income based repayment plan right now for most of my loans. But the income based repayment plan, the way it works is set up your in payment according to your income. But I have three different lenders. And right now I have two loans that I'm paying about 20 bucks or 40 bucks a month for one of them. And, um, but my income just, incre just increased. So my payments are probably going to go up. And when you add the numbers, it becomes a good chunk of money that goes into paying private student, lo uh, student loans. I know that one of them is right now at $100 a month. I got out and if all the others are going to increase to that, to that amount, it's going to be 100 plus 100. That's almost going to be 300 bucks paying for the federal loans, and then 275 for, for that I'm paying right now for the private student loan. That's almost about 500, 600 bucks that comes out of my monthly net income to pay for student loans. That's a lot of money. And uh, if I if I'm able to consolidate the federal loans, at least it will be only one payment, and at least it will not be that as bad. I know that the private loan may probably increase this year, but I'm going to try to see if I can make the argument that they should keep it in a lower because my payments because I was only be able to afford them, you know. Um, and I don't want to go through what I did this year, which is pretty much stop paying them because I didn't have the money. It was going to send me negative balances pretty much if I had to pay them. And, um, and I don't want to deal with that again. So I hope that they are understanding. If they are not understanding, I'm, I may just be forced to do the play this game again of not paying them. Um, but 
to, to be honest, the private loans has been the headache, the big headache for me. You know, I wish I had never taken that that's the loan. There's only one thing that I regret in life. I don't regret transitioning. I don't regret moving to New York State uh, to go to grad school in 2007. I don't regret, I mean, not in 2007, 2004. I don't regret the things that I have done so far, like changing my career and quitting the jobs that I have quit. I don't regret that. The big thing that I regret, however, is having taken that private student loan. That private student loan has, personally, I think it's the worst it was the worst decision that I ever made in my life. And this past year made a big financial disaster in my life. And it's something that if I hadn't had that, I will not have to worry about that. But it's uh, the big monster that I have to deal with. And I wish I didn't have it because like, if I didn't have that private solo loan, I would be able to save that money that is going now into me paying them into other things. And I may be able, maybe even, you know, Affording, affording the car is uh, it's not that bad. I mean, it's expensive because I have had a bankruptcy in my file, but um, but but even with that, the, the, I, with the money that I'm earning, I'm able to afford the car and the and insurance, you know. But because of the price only, I have to be very careful with my budget because that could put me in negative amount in semi my budget. To negative pretty much and that's a bad thing when that happens because it means that you are you are paying more for your things and um to be honest some of the banks that deny me the credit deny me the credit because of that because of me having excessive debt compared to my income and i have done research too the amounts of uh student loan that i owe is in the one hundred thousand dollars and uh According to one article that I read online on the USA Today, um, they said that if you have a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, you should be you will need a job that would pay you eighty thousand dollars or more a year to be able to to survive, pretty much to be able to 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 live okay. However, let's be realistic. There are no jobs that pay you in the beginning eighty thousand dollars a year. And I've been trying to get back into engineering. And this is the other good thing that I did this year. I I found a, when I started working for the state again, uh, one of my, the secretary, she found a open competitive examination for engineer. So I ended up taking a, an engineering test to get back in a government list. So we'll see what happened with that. I mean, that would be nice because then I will get more money more income, but I know that even with that, it's not going to be enough because my private loan is very, very high. The pay, the amount of money that I'm paying, the amount of money that they want me to pay is very high. And if I hadn't had that money, I could be putting that money away and I will have a good emergency fund and even a fund to go and visit my parents, which I don't get to see every year. I don't get to see my parents very often, neither my sister. And I know my parents are getting old and uh, to me, it worries me that it will happen the same that happened in 2010 when my grandmother died and I couldn't go on to her funeral and I got stuck here pretty much. And uh, I lost my grandmother and I couldn't be there. And I don't want that to happen if something bad happened to my parents, which I hope not. Um, but I have to be realistic, they're getting old, you know. I am getting old and not having the money to, to, to travel, it's something that really... Uh, worries me because um, I, uh, that would be very painful if I cannot go to home uh, if something happened to my family down there. So um, I hope that somehow I can find a way to get uh, and fix the financial situation with a still private solo loan, but I don't see anything that can help me unless I play the Mega Millions or some kind of uh, lottery tournament or something like that to, to win a prize that I that give me a lot of money so I can pay off that loan. But I don't know, man. I'm not going to lose the uh, um, hope that someday I can find a way to fix that. But for the moment, I have to make do with what I got. Anyway, I think I'm going to stop here. And I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Be safe tonight if you go out. And I will see you guys next year. Peace out.